Today we're going to take a look at an Octoprint plugin that could improve your 3D prints greatly. We're going to take a look at Arc Welder. Hey everyone, Chris here, and yes, today we are going to take a look at another Octoprint plugin. This time, Arc Welder. Now this one's by Brad. You might know him as former Lurker over on GitHub. He's behind a lot of great Octoprint plugins. But this plugin utilizes G2 and G3 commands instead of the normal G1 to try to smooth out some of the artifacts in your print. This is mostly related to circular objects, but it should help on a lot of different prints. And it might be kind of hard for me to explain, so let's just take a look at the plugin page. It's going to make a lot more sense if you see the pictures. Brad has a lot of great information out here on the page, including a few helpful diagrams, and he explains it in depth about how it works. I will try to go over this as well. But basically what it's doing, it's trying to replace some of these linear movements, G0s, G1s, with G2 and G3, arc movement. And it greatly compresses your G code, because you can imagine you would have to have a whole lot of G1 linear movements to achieve a circular pattern, when you have an arc movement that's actually a circular movement, there's a lot less commands to give it. And you can read all this information, but just looking at this, each one of these dots, it represents a start or end point of an extrusion. So on the left is standard G0, G1 movements, and on the right is G2 and G3. And it states right here, it's 76% smaller with 96% fewer extrusions slash retractions. So not only is it gonna give you better print quality, it might even buy you a little bit of print time. You can see down below here a before and after of the Benchy, and there's some stats that go with it as well. And all the information on how it works is on this page. So yes, just by using Arc Welder, you could improve your print quality, but there's another big issue that Arc Welder is trying to resolve, and that's stuttering. Stuttering is basically a condition where your command buffer runs out of commands and you have to wait for it to get another one to start printing again. So that causes your printer to halt, wait for the command, start, stop, start, stop, and that stuttering can leave some really strange artifacts on your print. Now, the stuttering is caused by a few different things, but sometimes it's caused by using Octoprint because you're accepting commands over a serial bus. When you use your SD card on your printer, that's actually going over SPI and it is much faster. So if you see that issue, most of the time you can correct it by just printing off SD. You can usually still print from the serial. You might have to do a little bit of troubleshooting, but this is one of the main issues that you're going to see. Let me show you an example. So here's an extreme example of stuttering. You can see all these artifacts on the outside of the Benchy. Now, I didn't actually cause this stuttering by command overflow. What you would see something caused by a serial connection. I overran the processor. And again, this is a very extreme case. It's going to be a lot worse if you overrun the processor. You might only see it a little bit if you're having a serial issue. But this is the kind of thing that Arc Welder is trying to fix. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like, it's actually really hard to see on camera but there is a stammer on this printer. And this Delta runs an 8-bit board, and I turned the feed rates and acceleration way up to cause this, just to give you an idea. But this is the machine that printed that white Benchy. It's almost easier to hear the stutter than it is to see it. Again, remember, this is an extreme case. So the fact that a G2 and G3 movement might improve your print quality, and that Octoprint streaming it over that USB serial might introduce some stutter, those are two great reasons to try out Arc Welder. But how does Arc Welder actually get all this done? So the first thing we need to do is make sure that your firmware has Arc support. Marlin does have it turned on by default right here, it does use a lot of memory. They've even got it out here. If you need to save memory on your board, this is a great feature to come in and comment out. But I know RipRap and Clipper both support Arc. And if you are gonna use Marlin with Arc support, 
try to get the newer versions. Anything over 2.06 has greatly improved the support. So that's the first part. Make sure this is enabled in your firmware. And for everyone that still has an 8-bit board, I did compile this on a 2560 processor, just this Tri-Gorilla board. Arc support will fit on that chip. You have a little bit of memory left over. And I do have Linear Advance enabled, and Arc Welder and Arc Support works just fine with Linear Advance enabled. Next up, we need to install Arc Welder. It's a plugin. So we can just go to Settings here in Octoprint, Plugin Manager, and Get More. You can just search for Arc, and here's Arc Welder. I always have it installed, but if you don't, just hit Install. Once it's installed, we can go back into Settings, and you'll have Arc Welder down under here, under the plugins. You can set the resolution that Arc Welder uses. This is basically the setting that Arc Welder tries to get those arc points to. If you go back to that example, it's the distance between the arc movements. Down here, it shows it a little better. That's the resolution setting. You can set the maximum radius and how it processes the file, if you would like it to automatically process it when it comes into Octoprint, which I think is the handiest. You can have it overwrite the source file if you wish. I usually leave that turned off, but that's mostly because I'm comparing the two. There are a couple of Arc Welder specific settings you can use here. I just go with the Octoprint profile settings, and there are some notification and progress bar settings here if you'd like to turn them on. There's also debug logging. You can grab the logs down here. And there is a warning down here. Remember, this is a work in progress, so it might affect things not as you expect it to, but I still think it's worth a try. So now we need to talk about G-code and what it's actually doing to that G-code. So we have Rebenchi here in Prusa Slicer. We've sliced it. Let's just take a look at the G-code file. We'll just pull it open in Notepad. And the Benchy isn't the greatest object to use Arc Welder on. Really, it's more focused at cutting down the angles on those radiuses for circle type prints. You can see all the different G1 commands. And Arc Welder is going to determine what of these commands it can take and compress it down to a G2 or G3 movement and then remove all those lines. So you have a lot fewer lines of G code to process when you're processing over SD card or serial. So the command buffer has less commands. So less chance to introduce that stuttering caused by that buffer starvation. So from Octoprint with Arc Welder installed, if we upload our G code, it'll come in as normal. But then as soon as it arrives, you're going to see the Arc Welder plugin up here in the top corner. It's compressing, and then it's going to give you some stats. If you want to see those again, you can just pop those open. It's down here on the G-code file. So for the Benchy, it actually compressed that G-code by 40%. It compressed 41,000 points, and it created almost 6,500 arcs. So if we download that G-code and take another look, you can see it's introduced a G3 and a G2 here and there. But you'll notice this compressed G-code file has 49,000 lines, non-compressed, 121,000 lines. So this arc welder file is going to be much easier for the printer and Octoprint to keep up with. But what if we take advantage of arc welder to its fullest extent and we print something that's a circle? This is just my test print that I came up with. But let's go ahead and slice that and throw it into Octoprint and let arc welder compress it. Arc welder is working on it. It's done. And we'll take a look at our stats. We compressed it 46%. 70,000 points compressed, 8,000 arcs created. It does give you all the stats on the different segments. And if we compare those G codes, here's that circular shape without arc welder. It takes a lot of G1 commands to create all those curves. 135,000 lines of G code just for that print. And then with arc welder, you can see a lot of these commands on this one are G3s, G2s. And we're down to 73,000 lines of G-code. So it should be a big improvement. So Arc Welder is using that G2 and G3 to condense down that G-code 
so that it's easier to process over the serial and it gives you more of a smooth transition for those print moves because it is an actual arc, counterclockwise or clockwise. That's the difference between G2 and G3. And it does greatly affect the print quality. So let's take a look at a few of those. So here's the circular object that I showed you in the slicer. Now all of these were printed on log. Log isn't the fanciest printer in the world, so excuse some of the print quality. But if you've ever tried to print a circular object, you'll notice a lot of these lines. And those go hand in hand all the way around because of those G1 movements. It's trying to take a linear movement and move it around a circular path. So it chops it up. So if you take a look at this print that's been through Arc Welder, there are still some artifacts in here like that, but they've been drastically smoothed out. And as far as I can tell, any artifacts that you see on here are on the stock print. It hasn't introduced anything new. And if you want a side-by-side, -side, without, with. So if you're trying to print a part that has lots of radiuses on it, this might be the plug-in for you. And I wanted to try this again just in a different color filament to see if I could see any difference. And I think this really shiny blue filament shows it even better. So without arc welder and with. And you can kind of move it around in the light and see those different points. I think this one shows that it even did a better job. Now in something like DaVinci, other than the fact that Log has some sort of Z-wobble going on that it didn't know about, it really didn't improve it that greatly. DaVinci does have some curves that it did help out on. It made it more efficient. But just because of the way that DaVinci prints, and this is PLA filament, you're not going at a very fast rate, it's going to be hard for you to tell the difference. This one is our stock. This one is with Arc Welder. Just looking at the front of the ship there, at one of the major curbs, you really can't see that much difference. So Arc Welder isn't going to help you out with every print, but I know over the years that I've done a lot of prints that this would have improved the look of greatly. Case in point, the fan duct that I did from the fan video a couple of weeks ago. You can see just how stepped it is around the barrel. This would have been a great candidate for Arc Welder. It would have taken care of a lot of this and made it a lot smoother. So there are a lot of use cases here. So there it is, the Arc Welder plug-in in a nutshell. Brad did a really great job on this, and again, he has made a lot of great plugins for Octoprint. I will leave all of his information in the description below. Please consider supporting his efforts. Also, Chris, one of our community members, sent me an email on Arc Welder and said it might make a good video idea. And I had been thinking about this for a long time, but lost track of it. So Chris, thanks for reminding me on that. But this plugin isn't for everyone, as a lot of plugins. But it does appear to work really well in some use cases. So I definitely urge you to give it a try if this is something you see on your prints. Now, there is the case of speed causing issues like this. And we are going to delve into that in a later video. That's why I was getting that Delta set up, but more to come on that. That's it for today. Hopefully you like this video, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.